Hello, I'm Noel, this is Antonia from Boxtail Soup Theatre Company and this is another Boxtail Scoop. Uh, it's been a very uh, eclectic week this week. As we said before, because we've got quite a lot of different projects going on, we've got a lot of different things to make, so it's meant that there's been a real mixture of, uh, of all kinds of different sort of shapes and sizes of things going on. So we thought we would just very, very quickly do a roundup of what we've made. Um, so you'll remember that you saw this shaped head before. Uh, so that's now had its complete coat of papier-mâché all over. And we just thought we'd show you what it would look like if it, once it becomes a sort of specific animal. So this is roughly what it might look like as a rabbit. And as we said, we're going to be using the base shape for various different animals. So then you'd put like a beak on or whatever for the duck. So that's what that would look like as a particular animal. So that's for Alice in Wonderland, but we're kind of putting that to one side for the moment. Mm -hmm. And then meanwhile, we've also, sorry, we've also been making another head, much like the Christmas Carol puppet's head. So Noel made a, a frame earlier in the week, which then I, I've covered and started to add a detailing for the eyes and the nose and all that sort of stuff. Um, and you were saying what's interesting about this one is that it's been it's based around um, an actual person yeah yeah so unusually mm -hmm. you've actually drawn around a face for the design of it and, and got the shape of the face and all that stuff uh, from a from a picture from a real person so yeah. that makes that one a little bit different and then for this one's going to have the same body as the christmas carol puppets as well so noel's been yeah so nothing terrifically complicated uh you know very similar compared to the christmas carol ones just a a, a shoulder shape that will hang at the bottom of the head and then once it's dressed once you've got the clothes on it the clothes hang off the shoulders and that creates the rest of the body and then the ring uh, the arms are just suspended by ribbon there so that they can move very easily and freely they're a little bit short at the moment in the extending a little bit at the front but that's all to come very soon and then for that particular puppet um there might be a pair of wings so you've been working on a mechanism for that too yeah uh this is a prototype and um, I can't really take credit for the design. It's just a kind of cantilevered system, which works really nicely. And I really like the, the movement of it and the way it works. But actually, if you search online for, um, for kind of wing designs or how to make a pair of wings, there are a lot of cosplayers who you know, make these incredible costumes um, from all kinds of uh, programs and series. But any costumes that have wings, there's quite a few that use a similar design to this. Uh, it's something like you get in the opening of a toolbox. It's that cantilever effect that makes it stick out like that, which is great. So I think we... it's quite a nice movement, but as we were saying, maybe this is a little complicated for that puppet or for what we need it for, but we quite like the movement of it, so we might use it for something in Gulliver's Travels, perhaps, or, or something like that. Yeah, so it's a good experiment, I think, yeah. that one. But we thought we'd focus this vlog on making frames for things and we did some unusual frame making this week because the brief is basically these sort of weird creatures so we let our imaginations run wild I suppose. We didn't do any sketches first and we just decided to start having a go and see what we came up with. So we thought we'd kind of go through the process of how you start making a, a, a frame for a puppet head be it a, a person shaped frame or an animal or a, something just fantastical mm -hmm. they all start the same sort of way so I think it's probably worth you explaining how you started that one first because that one does actually have an open an opening mouth sure so yeah these were a little unusual like you say mm. because often we will draw the face and, and design the character before we start making the frame so you've got something to refer to and you've got a sense of something that you're uh, that you're working towards for some of the Christmas Carol characters, in fact, because we were making quite a few, we didn't do that. We just knew that it had to be a human face. So we, we just started working, you know, knowing that it had to be something that looked roughly human. For these creatures, we didn't even have that restriction. Uh, so this one is based on an anglerfish, I suppose. I just basically wanted something that had a great big mouth and lots of, uh, lots of teeth. I really like the idea of it having a good underbite as well. So as you can see, He's got some fangs that sort of sit inside the mouth there and he's got a lovely underbite. And then he's got this kind of an anglerfish feel to the whole thing going on. Um, we did, we made both of these by just starting to build, kind of having a picture in your head and then just, just 
doing it straight up your head. So if you wanted to do it yourself, I think it's safe to say that if you've got any kind of um, frozen pizza box card is our favourite mm -hmm. card to use, or um, a cereal box card also works. So any sort of thin card like that, um, cut the rough edges, you know, open it out, cut the rough edges off, and then you can start building your shape. We tend to build, particularly with any puppet which just has a moving mouth, we build off the mouth first. So. You yeah, so I would, I would normally start by cutting out the, the flap that makes the mouth and then uh, you can probably see <clears throat> that there are a couple of rings for the fingers and the thumb that go in like so, that allow you to open the mouth. And then once I've done that, I'll start building off the back of that frame. Once you've got the mouth in, in there, then I'll build this loop across the top that gives me a rough idea of the size and the height of the head. And then I will start building the front of the face. I might put, usually I would put something straight down the middle first to give you the kind of shape at the front. And I wouldn't worry about the nose or anything like that. I would, if, if the character's got to have a nose, if it is going to be a human puppet or something, I could put that on afterwards. What I'm yeah. looking for first flat. is just the flat shape yeah. of the face, yeah. And then I might build something on the edge to give us the top lip so that you've got that shape around there. So one, by the time you've done that, you've kind of got the back of the head, which gives you the height and the overall shape of it. Then you've got something running down the front. Then you've got a flat piece giving you the kind of front of the front of the lip there. And that will stabilize that. If you've got all those bits, that's stabilized it, which then it allows you the more flexibility to then do different shapes on yeah. top of that. And that's, that's what you're looking for then, is something that you can Work stick off. other bits of yeah. card to, to then start to build the rest of the frame out. So then you can start to make shapes and get other bits of stuff that you're sort of sticking to those initial shapes that gives you more of the form of the whole face. I think the important thing as well to remember is that when you're starting out making any kind of frame is to is not to judge it too soon either you know just just get yourself a basic shape and then bear in mind obviously it's only it's only card you can usually move it around if you need to but just kind of confidently build keep building you then want to get these sort of eye the, the eye sockets which we you've got here on the fish which we would also use the same principle with a human face as well mm -hmm. so going in from the bridge of where the nose would be going in like that and then from yeah. the sort of... Yeah, and you're really just making a little U-bend in the piece of card and then sticking that on there. And I think you're absolutely right to say it's only card. It's only card and sellotape. So if there are any mistakes, it's easy to just cut something off or bend it again or take it off and re-stick it. You know, don't be afraid to go back and cut a piece out or try and, you know, try and make the shape again. And then, I mean, for, for, for then for the bottom jaw, you do basically a similar thing, wouldn't yeah, you? bottom jaw is very similar. I, I tend to do the top of the head first. Yes, I always do the top of the head first. Um, I think it's easier. And then I would do the same thing. I would put this bit on the bottom of the jaw so that I decided how far down, how big I want the jaw to be. And then I put a bit around the front of the jaw to give me a, a sense of, you know, where it's going to stick it's out. It's a bit and... like a, a baseball, is it baseball helmet? You know, the... That bit of helmet. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, like the thing they have yeah. on the front. Um, and then exactly the same thing. You can then start to use that bit of the frame to put extra bits across to fill the thing out. And, and the that last, gives you stuff to lay the papier mache on. And the last kind of things that you'd put on are things like details like teeth or this kind of pokey out bit. And um, with the one that I built, uh, it's, it's a little bit more tr tricky to see, in fact, because uh, it's more of an abstract shape and also it doesn't have an, a moving mouth. The idea with this one is it's the head of a fantastical kind of, you called it a vampire chicken, it is a bit like that. It's sort of a fantastical bird, which will then have um, kind of flapping, flapping wings. wings. So that'll be its movement. But that's where the eye cavity is here. I've given it this sort of, I don't know what you call this. What do you call that? A comb. A comb, yeah, I've given it a comb. And then some fangs, and there's the beak. But basically I built it off the same principle. So even though I knew it wasn't gonna have a moving mouth, funnily enough, I actually cut out the same kind of shape I would have done were it to have a moving mouth, because that's the best thing to build off. Because then you can get this kind of, um, you get that kind of D shape mm -hmm. there off the, oops off the bottom and, and the top, which is how I, how I built the, 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 same, the same way. Uh, it's much like when you're doing a sketch and you've got a blank piece of paper in front of you, and that's kind of the hardest moment, yes. is where to start and how to begin. So the idea of starting in the same place every time, of starting with that mouth, gives you a reference point, a point that you can start with 
get a sense of the size of the whole thing and then you can start to build off that. So having a kind of you know anchor point to keep going, okay, that's that's what I'm referring to and that's the size of the whole thing. It's nice to have somewhere to know that's my starting point. Absolutely. So that's that's how we do those really. And I think it's the same, it is, it's the same principle, be it beast or human mm -hmm. uh, or bird. <laughs> they are, yeah, and then, the next stage now is to give these a rough coat, an initial first coat of papier-mâché. Um, and even in doing that, you'll start to refine the shape a little bit more. Yes. There might be bits of card, in fact, that you cut out where you go, actually, I'd, I'd like to have a little dip here, so that's not quite right. I'm just going to cut that bit out. And certain bits then at that stage where you, you either smooth over or you go with the kind of indents that you've mm -hmm. got between the pieces of card. So we can show you that stage um, next week i would think they'll have definitely have had a first coat on but yeah give it a go get some card some sellotape and some scissors and that is literally all you need mm -hmm. to make one of these yeah uh so thanks very much for watching uh i hope that was of interest and if you've enjoyed it please do give us a thumbs up or give us a like leave us a comment possibly even subscribe that would be great otherwise thanks again for watching see you next time mm -hmm.